Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm going to be talking about one of what we consider to be one of the really big features of Velostrone 112. Obviously we've already done a couple of videos showing you some of the smaller features in Velostrone 112 but this one is a real big one. So one of the problems with simulators in general is that the view that you get when you're flying in the simulator does not match the camera that you use on your real quad and in Velocirone 112 we've removed that problem so if you go into options now and go to quad settings one of the things that you can turn on down the bottom here is true lens and what this does is it creates a true lens so this is a photogrammetrically accurate representation of the lens that you select and there are several lenses in here you can select from I'm gonna run the micro 2.1 millimeter because I have that on quite a few of my quads and this will give me the exact same FPV lens that I use on my real quad the same barrel distortion the same depth perception the same distance stretching everything is exactly the same as the real lens on your quad when you run one of these lenses and we actually took run cam lenses as it turned out and digitally mapped them to be completely the same as the real lens in the sim okay so I'm gonna have a look see what it looks like so we'll fly the oblivion why not and we'll go to football stadium and I'm going to run the multi-GP 20, 2017 regional final track because it actually allows me to show you some things using the lenses if I run this particular track. Ready to race. Okay, so straight away you can probably see that you've got the kind of a distortion you'd expect to get on the lens. You've got the bending of the ground when you're on the ground, the bending of the horizon. We've got around about 165 degrees field of view here. So no more 110 or 112, 150, 120, none of that stuff anymore. This is now 165 degrees field of view, exactly the same as the real micro 2.1 millimeter lens, or it might be 170. I can't, I can't remember what the exact parameters of the lens, but it gives you that really wide field of view that you're used to having when you fly one of these lenses. If we just take off and fly this track now you can see that we've got the same barrel distortion that you'd expect to get so as you as things go to the bottom of the screen they curve upwards and as they go towards the top of the screen they curve down that's the barrel distortion across the lens we've also got the same kind of distance and a depth stretching that you get with the real lens as well and we can show that by if I go up I just give it a little punch up high you can see we look really high we're up here and then when we come down the ground suddenly rushes up towards us and that's the exact same kind of effect that you get with a real lens is that this ground all of a sudden rushes up you'll notice that the speed that I'm dropping down looks higher than it would normally do and that's because the lens is creating that that effect it kind of makes you look higher than you are so when you drop down it seems like you're dropping faster and this is one of the effects of FPV lenses and it's one of the reasons why lots of simulators out there get labeled with floaty and that kind of thing it's because the camera perspective that you're seeing through is not the same as what you're used to seeing and things are are distorted and not the same as you see with with your FPV lens the other thing you might notice is that as I come up to these multi GP gates they look really huge as I fly through them they look like they're gigantic so one of the things that we've had with this particular track is people saying hey are these gates the right size they don't look the right size they look too small but once you put the correct lens on all of a sudden these gates look really big and it seems like it's a lot easier to hit your target now and that's just because the gates look bigger when you view them through a accurate representation of your lens now 
before we get too overexcited about this particular feature, one of the things about this feature, and you can probably see it in, in this video, is that there is some loss of visual sharpness or clarity. And the reason behind that is because we've had to take the image that you would get from the normal game camera and then convert it and stretch it and pull it around to get it to look like this. And when you do that, you lose a little bit of the crispness or visual clarity that you would get because you're moving pixels around and distorting things in order to get the view that you want. So that's one effect of doing this work. The other effect of doing that work is that we're doing this in real time. So real time we're moving pixels and stretching pixels and changing the shape of the image. And of course that takes a processing overhead to do that. So for low spec machines you'll have to run quite a low resolution in order to be able to use these new lenses on a gaming machine which is what I'm on here I'm actually running 2560 by 1440 here on a GTX 1080 and it's really not that bothered about doing this work in fact if I land and just show you my frame rate here you can see I'm in beautiful it's the high quality stadium and I'm still getting 240 odd frames a second so it's not really hitting my machine that hard to do this obviously if the lens was turned off I would be getting a lot higher frame rate than that but I'm not having to run fastest or anything like that in order to in order to run this lens if you've got a gaming rig then you'll be able to run these lenses full screen like this without any problem at all if you've got a low spec machine then really what we suggest is that you use these in the way that they were intended really which is to view the sim through your goggles because if you think about it the lens that I'm running here is, is a 4.3 lens but I'm displaying it on a 16.9 screen resolution which is why it's been stretched horizontally a little bit so this is a bit like running a 4.3 camera with sky zone goggles which are a 16.9 image so you get a stretching of the image as a result but if I was to run this to my goggles at say 800 by 600 my HD3 goggles at 800 by 600 then it would be a 4.3 image and it would actually look exactly like the Runcam 4.3 image that I would normally see through my goggles and the advantage of doing this and running it through your goggles is that you're not running a really high resolution anymore so the frame rate hit that you're going to get from running high resolution and doing this kind of distortion of the image to create a realistic lens if you drop your resolution down to the kind of resolution that goggles run at then one you're not going to look you're not going to notice the loss of visual clarity because goggles are fairly low resolution anyway and secondly you're not going to lose frame rate you're probably going to gain frame rate by running that lower resolution so we actually recommend using this facility or this new feature with your goggles and it gives you a really very very realistic effect when you use it with the goggles everything feels the quad feels more organic it feels much more like the real life quad the way it handles and drops through through gates I and mean, if I if I do a quick split S over this gate down the end here you'll see that you can really drop quickly over a gate like that and I'm not powering down or anything to make that kind of drop over it's just it just looks right now and the same if I do a power up here and just drop into this dive gate you can see it really drops down into there because the lens is giving you the correct perspective and the correct view that you would expect the other thing is you've got this wider field of view now as well so you're much more aware of things that are off to your left and right so when you're doing a flag slalom like this for instance you can see the flags all the way through the slalom going out to the edges of your of your lens they're never actually out of view because you've got that much wider field of view now to be able to see so it gives you that same kind of awareness of what's around you where gates are to line up on them before you know when they when they would normally be out of your view because you've got a narrower field of view if you aren't running the true lens 
Okay, so I mean that probably gives you uh, a good idea. If I just pop up high here and drop down, you'll, you'll see that uh, you know, you've really come down quite quickly through that dive gate. It has, you know, a real, a real realistic and a much more kind of organic feel to the way the, the quad flies. And uh, I mean, it's a real pleasure for me to to introduce this feature because we've had this one under wraps for absolutely ages. It's it's been a real technical challenge to get to here, and I'm I'm really pleased to be able to bring this to you and be the first simulator to have photogrammetrically accurate lenses. I don't think any other simulator has got this. Whoops. And so uh, this is a first, I think for Velostrain to be able to deliver this kind of functionality and and I hope other simulators also try to go down this route and produce cameras that look right because it's the only way really you're going to get things to feel right and for the physics to be right and for the camera to be right as well. One of the problems that all simulators have is that if your camera isn't right then you have to play around with the physics to make it look right which actually then makes the physics wrong whereas with this you can have the physics right and it looks right and uh, that's that's what we should be trying to do with simulation is to create accurate simulation where the physics are right and it looks right rather than the physics being wrong but it looking right because the camera is is wrong anyway that's um that's it that's the 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 kind of really big feature that we're introducing in Velostrum 112 and as I say for low spec machines you're going to run have to run fairly low resolution or through goggles to use this but for gaming machines you should be able to run it on your screen big you know, big resolution like this if you want to and it's a choice we don't we don't force this choice on you if you don't want to run these lenses and you prefer to have the the old the old view with crisper graphics then that's absolutely fine you can you can have that something else I mention is that um, the insert and delete keys no longer change the field of view when you're running a true lens so if you hit the insert key it will actually change to a different lens instead so I've now switched to the 2.3 and you can see that this lens has now changed I haven't got quite as wide a field of view anymore things look a bit closer to me when I'm going through this flag slalom because I'm now running the 2.3 millimeter lens not as aware of things around me because it's not quite as a, a wide field of view and if I want to go back to the 2.1 lens then I can just hit the button there we go and we're back to the 2.1 and the wider field of view Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about with True Lens, and uh, it will be available in the 1.12 release that's coming soon. Okay, see you on the next video.